Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about storage solutions and I want to point out too, this is going to be targeted mostly at gamers for one major reason and that is that if you're a gamer, you don't have to worry about failures of storage nearly like you do if you're in a workstation setting and you might not be backing up to something like a NAS or to a cloud service of some sort. And the reason for gamers that you don't have to worry about that, at least for the most part these days, and obviously there are some exceptions, but most games on all of your major platforms have cloud save of some sort. Uh, if you play a game that has an account setting like Overwatch, your League of Legends, all those, you, you have a specific account and that's all just in the cloud. And even if you have a lot of single player games, like your Skyrims or some other games, you know, your Fallout Skyrims, uh, GTA, I believe, has it. Um, your your save data is in the cloud. So if your computer just gets hit by a bolt of lightning and completely destroyed, every component's gone, it really doesn't make a difference other than to your wallet and, you know, building a new computer. But all of your save data is perfectly safe. Now, for me, the gold standard of storage, at least in a PC setting, is at least one terabyte of storage. At least that's what I like to shoot for. And that's because games these days are getting larger and larger all the time. You'll have games that take up anywhere from 50 to 100 gigabytes of data. So if you only have 500 gigabytes of storage in your PC, you're gonna be constantly shuffling out games to install new games, and you just won't have as big of a library available to you when you just wanna sit down and pick a random game that you just have installed and ready to go. So for that, and this is my recommendation, we're gonna just launch into it. I prefer to have an NVMe drive as your boot device. Now, I don't necessarily think you should have a giant NVMe drive, especially if you're trying to keep your build budget friendly. So something like this, this is actually a 256 gigabyte inland SSD, which are currently not available on Amazon. They were when I bought it, that's where I bought it through. Um, if you're near a micro center though, typically the prices are pretty close between Amazon and micro center. In fact, micro center may have actually been the seller on Amazon for this particular drive but you can find a cheap NVMe drive, and actually we're gonna go and take a look at this. You can find a low storage, so 128 gigabyte NVMe drive for it looks like right around $32 on Amazon. So our total right now is $32. Now this is an inland 480 gigabyte SSD, and it runs right now on Amazon, readily available for $50 flat for 480 gigabytes. Now that's a big improvement from last year or about a year and a half ago when SSDs were really expensive. You could get the cheapest 480 gigabyte one back then for like 100, 500, 10, 115, or even $120. Now they are very, very cheap. In fact, they're the cheapest I've ever seen them. If you're thinking about an SSD upgrade, I don't really foresee the prices getting lower. I can't imagine that they would keep dropping like this, but now would not be a bad time at all to pick up an SSD. And I'm actually gonna recommend for this particular storage solution, so you have your 120 gigabyte NVMe drive, I would recommend picking up a pair of these and running these in a RAID 0 array. In fact, I'd recommend doing that instead of getting a one terabyte SSD and running it by itself, and let me explain. So if you don't know, RAID 0 is simple striping of data across multiple drives. In this case, I'm recommending two of these 480 gigabyte drives, and the big benefit here is that you theoretically get faster speeds out of your RAID array, and it'll show up in Windows. Once you have it set up, it'll show up as just a normal single volume. So once you have it set up, there's nothing else that you need to worry about getting set with it. You just treat it like an individual drive, just understanding that you're getting a little bit faster performance. And I'll go ahead and put up the uh, results from my testing of Crystal Diskmark uh, from a simple SATA drive, that's a single SATA drive, a RAID 0 pair of SATA drives, as well as one NVMe drive, so you can kind of see what type of performance you're getting from the RAID array. But the big other reason, besides the speed benefit that you're getting here, is that uh, a single one terabyte SSD is actually more expensive than a pair of 480 gigabyte SSDs. In fact, the cheapest drive right now that's 960 gigabytes uh, SSD wise on Amazon is this Patriot drive for $110. So one of those drives is actually $10 more expensive than getting a pair of these and running these in RAID 0 gives you quite a bit extra performance over the single SATA based drive. Now the big drawback here is that you're actually introducing a second point of failure. And this is the main reason that I'm recommending this mostly for gamers and not necessarily for people that require a uh, machine to be functioning 
all the time perfectly and you're trying to limit hardware failures. And that is that if one of your SSDs fails in a RAID 0 array, the entire volume is lost and gone forever because it's striping that data across both volumes. There's no redundancy here with this particular RAID array. So if one drive fails, it all fails, which is why I recommend the 120 gigabyte NVMe boot drive because you can keep some of your more mission critical files on there because again, that has one point of failure with your boot drive. If your boot drive fails, it's gone. If it doesn't fail, it's good to go. And then if one of these other drives fails in your sort of gaming volume, if you will, uh, it's not a big deal. You replace that one drive, you reset up your RAID 0 array, re-download your games and you're off and running again because again, cloud saves enabled and you don't have to worry about losing mission critical data in that regard. Now, this is not the most cost effective solution in existence. Obviously, you could just as easily do a 120 gigabyte SSD and then run a RAID 0 array with a couple of maybe 500 gigabyte hard drives and get better than hard drive performance on your RAID array while maintaining SSD performance for some of your core applications like your web browser and that sort of thing with your startup. If you don't mind loading times whatsoever with games, then that could even be a budget way of doing a similar setup, but then maintaining the SSD boot drive for general system snappiness. And you know what? If you're on a more of a budget and you don't have the money to throw at $50 SSDs, that's actually a pretty good option as well. But that's a quick overview of my preferred storage solution right now that I would be recommending for gamers that are putting together a brand new gaming PC. And I will leave a link down below. For those of you that don't know how to set up a RAID array in Windows, I'll leave a tutorial link from another channel. Um, there are tons of these on YouTube that, that you can find. If you're wanting to set up your RAID array in your uh, motherboard's BIOS though, just understand that every BIOS is a little bit different between manufacturers and one guide on an ASUS BIOS or an ASUS platform may not really apply very well to an MSI platform or Gigabyte platform. So you'll have to search more for your uh, motherboard specific setup for that. But most motherboards, at least most modern motherboards, you can set up a software RAID array in the BIOS directly and not have to worry about doing it through Windows. If you're more into that, uh, you can feel free to go that route, but understand that performance is gonna be very, very similar. There's very little loss by setting it up in Windows versus setting it up in the BIOS of your motherboard, and the Windows version is considerably easier to do. That is, if you're a beginner, it's much easier to do. If you're perfectly comfortable in the BIOS of your motherboard, then that's also very easy as well. It, it's really not that hard either way. Regardless, I do always wanna hear from you guys. If you have a RAID array set up on your PC, whether it's one for redundancy and saving data or one for just getting faster speed, or maybe you combine the two and you have a few more drives in your PC where you do get a little bit of redundancy, but also a little bit of striping along with it. Let me know what your RAID array is and let me know what you're using it for. And as always, if you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things very helpful to the channel. Your uh, social media access to me is uh, linked or not really linked, but shown down below. It's the same for both Instagram and Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And of course, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.